Hey everyone, Laura here with Rags to Rugs, and I am so excited about this video. I've been wanting to do this video for the longest of times. In all the years I've been in business, these top, these tips, my top 10, are all going to be in this video, starting from number 10, working our way up to number one, one being my very, very favorite. So hang with me throughout the whole video because there's a lot of good stuff packed into this one video that we're going to upload to our YouTube channel. We're going to start right away, in fact, with number 10. And this is a question that's asked me all the time is, what do you recommend to keep our rugs from slipping under our feet? Hands down, this is the best product on the market. Now, this particular one is by Fiberlock. It is a latex, non-skid rug backing. It's fabulous. A little bit goes a long way. I actually paid $18.99 for this at Hobby Lobby. You can find it online, but $18.99 is a good investment because it does last a long time. The way you use it is to paint it, believe it or not, on the back of your rug. I use a sponge a brush. This happens to be a one inch, but you can use any size of sponge brush. You apply it to the back of your rug. So you apply it very sparingly though. You don't want to get too thick. You start at the center, you work your way out to about one inch from the very edge and you literally just apply it just like this all the way around, just re, um, dipping your, your brush and moving all the way around until you get the whole rug done. Now the manufacturer recommends letting this dry for 24 hours and then applying another coat. I don't personally do that. I just use one coat on my rugs and it works great, but I'll let you be the judge of that. There are three things about this product that I love. One is it's washable. That's a really good thing. Two is that it dries nearly transparent on the back of your rug. So if you like to flip your rugs over and use both sides, you'll still be able to. But three, this is one that's really important, getting back to how do you keep um, from slipping on those rugs. Well, as opposed to the cut to fit rug pads that I don't recommend for a number of different reasons, those pads can actually jar. You know, when you go to step on that rug, your foot will actually jar, and that's not a good thing. But because this product is made out of latex, when you step on that rug, it'll actually give just a little bit, not a lot, but it'll keep you from slipping on that rug. So number 10, latex, non-skid rug backing. Highly recommend it. So moving on to tip number nine. This is a really good one. This is all about the tail on your crochet rug. Now, many people, videos that I've read, seen in any way, recommend that you weave in that tail as you're making the rug. But I'm gonna tell you otherwise. I'm gonna suggest strongly that you don't weave in the tail. Now, for those of you who don't know what a tail is, a tail is the very beginning piece of that slip knot that you used to start your rug. This is what I call the tail, this little piece of fabric. Some people recommend that you weave it in as you're crocheting, crochet it right into your rug. I'm going to recommend again that we leave that tail. Let me explain to you why. If you are using our instructional video on how to crochet rugs, and many of you do because we've sold nearly 40,000 copies of this as of the date of this video, which is an awesome thing. But inside that video is a cheat sheet. And again, for those of you who follow us, I always recommend using a paper clip to mark the round that you're on. In this particular case, this is a work in process. This is a rug I'm working on as we speak. And I am on round nine. But after I started on round nine, I got called away. I'm working in the kitchen and it's hours later before I come back. And I can't remember if I just started that round or if I'm finishing that round. So, and I'm sure that all of you have had the same situation. I know because of the paper clip that I'm on round nine, but I don't know if I've, where I'm at with that round. Because as you know, what you do on one end of your rug, you need to do the same thing on the other end. So there's two different parts to every round. Well, this tail is going to be your clue from, from now on that where the end that the tail is, is going to be the first part of your round. So I can tell, looking at my rug, that I am moving in this direction on this round, on round nine. The tail isn't on that end. So this is the second half of round nine. As I make the turn here, and I come back around down here, 
Sure enough, there's my tail. That means I'm gonna move my line marker down, my paper clip, on my pattern, on the cheat sheet that's in our, our video, and I'm gonna be starting, yep, round 10. So that tail is invaluable to you to always remember where you are in the process of that round. Don't crochet it in until you're done with your rug. That's my tip number nine. Okay, so moving on to tip number eight. This one is called Clip Your Wings. Now, a number of years ago, when I first got into twine weaving, I would make these beautiful, beautiful twine woven rugs, but throughout the body of that rug were these little points that were sticking up, fabric points. They look like wings, and I didn't like it. It was all throughout the body with these cute little wings wherever I was connecting a fabric strip. So that day I thought, I'm gonna clip those wings so that it's not so obvious throughout my rug and hopefully it'll look just a little bit better because they're kind of bugging me. So ever since then, everybody's referring to now clipping your wings, don't forget. Now, not just on your twine woven rugs, but on your crocheted rugs, on your toothbrush rugs, on your braided rugs, whatever, always remember to clip your wings. And let me show you how to do that. So you all know how to add a fabric strip. But I'm gonna show you right now. So again, to add a fabric strip, you lay your new strip, this little piece here I've just got for this demonstration. And before I even go to connect it, I'm gonna clip here, and I'm gonna clip here, clipping those wings. You fold it back a half an inch, you make that quarter inch slit right in the center, you open it back up, and that new strip, you're gonna lay on top of the old strip, aligning the slit, and feed it up. Now, when you go to weave, because of clipping those wings, you're not gonna have those little corners sticking up throughout your rug. So always remember to clip your wings. So moving on to tip number seven. This one could easily be at the top of my tip list because I really like it that much. This product is called Scotchgard, and if you've never used it, you're missing out. This is not only your rug's best friend, but it's gonna become your best friend too. Scotchgard says right on the can, it's a fabric protector. And I'm here to tell you it also conditions your fabric. It also repels liquids. So let's just say you just finished a rug and you sprayed it generously with Scotchgard and you laid that rug in front of your kitchen sink, but oops, you spilled a whole bowl of soup. Are you gonna be worried about it? No way, because you have Scotchgard on it, it's gonna repel that liquid. What about stains? It says it blocks stains. Ooh, it wasn't a bowl of soup, but it was a, a, um, a cup of coffee. Are you gonna worry about that coffee staining your rug? No, because you use Scotchgard. So use this whenever you make a rug before you lay it down on the floor for the very first time. Use Scotchgard to condition the fiber, to repel against water, and to repel against stains. But there's one more thing that I really like about it. It protects from color fade. So let's say that beautiful rug that you just finished, you've decided to show off in the back of your couch, but it's in, the, in front of a really hot window. Lots and lots of sun comes in that window. You don't have to worry about the fabric fading. And for that part matter, you don't need to worry about your couch fading either because you're gonna use this on your upholstery. You can use this on your high traffic areas. You can use it on your car upholstery. You can use it on your bedding. You can use it everywhere because it's safe and it lasts. And guess what? You can pick this up at Dollar General for $10. It's at Walmart. It's at your grocery store. You can find this everywhere, but don't make a rug without Scotchgard. So now we're ready for tip number six. And this is another really favorite one. I feel like I've been talking about this for years now, but my tip to you is to never wash your rug. Never ever wash your rug in your washing machine. That washing machine is way too hard on this beautiful rug that you just finished. Never ever wash in your washing machine. Instead, take advantage of your bathtub. Fill that bathtub with some warm water. Use a mild detergent. Now I use Woolite, but there are many on the market that are just perfect. A fourth of a cup, and lay your, your rug in that bathtub. Let it soak. Use your hands to force that water up through the fiber of your rug. 
Or if you do like I do, I actually roll up my pant legs and get in and squish it with my feet. Um, but regardless, make sure it really penetrates the fiber. Let it soak, rinse it two or three times, drain it, let it drip dry, roll it up in some terry cloth towels, and take advantage of a nice, warm, breezy day to lay it flat on your deck. Decks are great because you've got the airflow that comes up and around, and there it's just wonderful because it dries your rug really quickly. Now, if you don't have a deck, a patio is fine, a driveway is fine. It doesn't take very long at all for this rug to dry, but don't forget to use Scotch Guard. Scotch Guard again, as soon as you wash that rug, come back in and generously apply your Scotch Guard on the front and the back. Now, having said this, too, when you go to wash your rug, if you choose to hang it on, if you don't have a clothesline and you're tempted to hang it on your fence, don't do that because the weight of the water is going to stretch it out of shape and it's not going to look really good when it's done. So always lay it flat when you're letting it dry. So that was my tip number six. So I'm ready to share with you tip number five. On tip number six, I said don't use your washer. Now I'm going to suggest you not use your dryer. But just for those store-bought fabrics and those sheets that you may have picked up at Goodwill or Salvation Army. You can wash those in your washing machine because we want to remove the starch from that store-bought fabric. You bought it off the bowl and it's kind of starchy. You always want to wash it. The same with your sheets. You're going to want to remove that hem and that selvage. You're going to want to remove the elastic. Use your washer to, to wash them thoroughly, but don't be tempted to put them in your dryer. Instead, once they come out of your washer, fold them and hang them to dry on your clothesline and let mother nature iron them. You're, you're going to know what I mean when you take them off because they're just perfectly flat, just like somebody had pressed them and they're ready to cut and work into your rugs. If you don't have a clothesline, you can use a shower rod. If you don't have a shower rod, you can dip, drip them over a drawer, but don't put them in your dryer because what's going to happen is going to come out in a ball. And the first thing you're going to say is, oh no, now I'm going to have to iron them before I can cut them into my strips. So my recommendation is don't dry your fabric or your sheets. Instead, hang them to dry and let Mother Nature do its thing. Okay, so you're ready for tip number four. Well, if you remember on five and six, I'm suggesting strongly that you don't use your washer and you don't use your dryer. But now I'm going to come back and say, but yes, use your dryer for this reason only. Many times when that rug is in front of the kitchen sink or is in front of the vanity, it's stepped on a lot and your, the fiber gets collapsed, right? It's not necessarily dirty because you've been using a Scotch guard to protect it, right? But it's just the fiber is collapsed, so it's no longer as thick as it once was. I'm suggesting instead of washing it, take advantage of your dryer, but just for six or eight minutes. Throw that rug into your dryer. Let the heat of the dryer re-energize the fiber, fluff it back up, and restore its original beauty without having to wash it. Because you use Scotchgard, and let's just say that particular rug is your cat's favorite, and there's fur that has settled on that, which further helps to, to collapse that fiber, right? But it doesn't necessarily need washed. By throwing it in the dryer, you take it out after six or eight minutes, look at the lint trap, and I guarantee you, because you use this, all that lint or that fur has been quickly removed and it's now in your lint trap. It could be dirt that's settled on. Maybe you're using it in your mud room and there's a lot of people that walk in and out with some muddy shoes. It will remove that dirt and it will remove any debris that's settled on it. It'll remove that fur and you didn't have to wash it at all. Just a few minutes in your dryer and your rug is good as gold. Okay, so now we're ready for tip number three. And just recently, I've been asked this question many, many times, so I thought I'd add it to this because I think that the more confident we are becoming in our rug making skills, the more aggressive our rug projects. So many of you are actually taking on large room size rugs or dining room rugs. And a question that keeps coming to me is, how do I know what size of rug to make for my dining room table? Well, the rule of thumb is to do this. Make sure your chairs are pushed all the way in. Measure four to six inches from the outside of that chair and all the way around. That's the size of rug I'm going to recommend that you make. 
Now, if you go online, when you've got store-bought rugs, they're going to say to, to take it out a foot or more so that when you pull your chair out, it's still sitting comfortably on that rug. But with our crocheted rugs or our, our woven rugs, we don't want to make them that big because, number one, it becomes a very high traffic area. Underneath the rug, it's never going to get stepped on, but out here it will. So we want to avoid that as much as possible. But also, the bigger the rug, the more of a trip hazard. So if you have someone in your family or yourself that's dependent on a wheelchair or a cane, we don't want that rug to be out that far. So you push your rug, your chair in, measure out four to six inches and all the way around. And that's the size I recommend for your rug. Now, one more point is, mom used to teach me that pick up your chair, don't drag it on the floor. So this will be a good time to practice that. When you are seating at the table, make sure that the guests know that they need to pick up the chair and move it back. And when you put the chairs back, make sure you pick them up and move them back in to keep that, the, the legs of your chair from snagging up on your rug. So that was my tip number three. So I'm excited to bring to you our tip number two. Now, the reason why this is so exciting to me is because of all the hundreds of classes I've taught, for whatever reason, I always seem to stumble on how to teach a simple slip knot. You'd think it'd be so easy. You'd think that the, slip, the single crochet stitch would be harder, but no, the slip knot is the hardest part of my classes. So I figured out a way to teach this that I think you're really gonna like. And Lisa's gonna video me from the back, so bear with me here. I'm using a roll of our uh, Real Red Broad Cloth, and I'm going to, on the left is, is, I've got about 12, maybe 15 inches of fabric, right? I'm gonna use my hand, and I'm gonna pinch that fabric between my pinky, right there. Pinch it, you can actually shove it back there. Wrap it around, all the way around, and come back and pinch it there at your pinky again. Pretty easy, right? All you're gonna do then is pinch this first loop, and feed it off. Then I'm gonna pinch the next loop and feed it off. And there's gonna be one loop remaining and I'm gonna pinch that and I'm gonna then grab the long piece and give it a slight gentle tug. At this point then, you can adjust that loop to, to fit your um, crochet hook. And you've got right there very easily the perfect slip knot. Okay, so everyone, we finally reached my number one most favorite tip. Now, I'd like to ask you to do one thing for me, and that is to hang till the end of this particular tip, to the end of this video, because in my opinion, this is by far the most important tip that I can share with you. And I might get a little emotional because this is an important thing to me. Social media. What I'd like to suggest is try to avoid comparing your creation to rugs shared on social media. You are an artist. You are literally with these rugs painting with fabric. Your rug is special, your rug is unique, and your rug is yours. Now, social media can be very, very cruel. I had an experience just recently when we uploaded our newest video um, on how to avoid the stair step. We all know what that is now, and we've all looking for ways to avoid that stair step. Well, what happened was that video uploaded, and I was happy with it, but I got a phone call. I got a phone call from a friend and a customer, and just a week earlier than that, she was so excited to tell me she had finished 12 rugs. She was on a roll. This was like she had found her love making rugs. Then she watched the video. And she looked back at those 12 rugs that she had just finished and she saw the stair step. And she became distraught. She became discouraged. She decided to throw in the towel and she called me to let me know that her lot rugs were no longer worthy. And that really bothered me. In fact, it broke my heart. I'm gonna get emotional here, so bear with me. <laughs> but it really bothered me because the reason we uploaded that video was to teach. So my suggestion to you is love the rug you make. Use social media to learn from, not compare to. 30, 40 years ago when I was first started crocheting, 
social media for me was gathering the girlfriends and we'd all sit around and we'd laugh and we'd giggle and we'd make rubs or make doilies or whatever it was we were making. But that was our social media because we didn't have internet. We didn't have social media. We didn't have Facebook. We didn't have Pinterest or YouTube or anything else. Our social media was gathering the girlfriends and enjoying each other's company and patting each other on the backs for this beautiful creation that we just made. That was social media back then. These days, again, social media can be cruel. So use social media to learn from, not compare to. Be kind to yourself. Be proud of yourself and enjoy this wonderful process of making these rugs. That's my number one tip. And thank you so much for listening. Please, if you would, subscribe to our channel. We would love for you to watch all the videos that we've got planned in the coming weeks. And in the meantime, make it a great day.